So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, slopes and rates of change. I think it's probably one of the more important uh, concepts in linear equations, right? And especially with connecting slopes to real life problems, which is just rates of change. Let me give you an example. We know how to find the slope, right? So if we have a line, let me just go ahead and just do a quick x, y axis, okay? And if we have a line that looks something like this, we know it's a positive line because it's going upward from left to right, right? <clears throat> and what we defined as slope, again, quick review, slope is equal to the difference in the y-axis, right? So we designate that by putting that little delta, which means difference. Difference in y over the difference in x, which means that if I have two different coordinates, I just subtract the y-coordinates and then I subtract the x coordinates. So if I had something like, let's just make this negative 1, negative 4. And if I had something like this one over here, let's make this 3 and 1. Again, I could just subtract the two y's, negative 4 minus 1, subtract the two x's, negative 1 minus 3, and I end up with negative 5 over negative 4, which would be a slope of 5 over 4. The other way we learned how to do this was just to say the rise over the run. And the rise would be just counting upward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the run would be 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, you get 5 over 4, OK? Now, what may not be so obvious, though, is that this is also called a rate or the rate of change, right? Now, when I say something like miles per hour, per hour, I am basically helping you identify what the y-axis is and what the x-axis is, aren't I? If you were to go over here, and if we wanted to find something in miles per hour, I would know that my y-axis would be the miles. And my x-axis would be the hours. Okay? So let's say I, I have a car that's going 15 miles per hour. Okay? And, and you've seen that. That's a fairly common thing to do, like in a real-life problem. Essentially, what I am saying is something like this. And I'm just going to make mostly the first quadrant, since both of those are real things. Okay? And I want to make, we just said that these were hours. And most of the time, you'll see the x-axis is usually time. OK, I would say that happens probably the major, vast majority of the time. And then the y-axis, we call this one miles. right? And that's usually some kind of a distance. OK, there we go. So it would make sense to try to fit this. So we'd have like one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we just go ahead and label. It would be important to do that. And then you could just say the rest of it is continuous. Now we know that it's 15 miles per hour. So that means that after one hour, I need to go up to where 15 is located. You probably want to take into account how many miles or how much distance you want in this particular problem. So maybe we should do something like uh, increments of 10. So we'll say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, okay, and then 60, 70, etc. So 15 would be right about there. If I were to say in two hours, what would be my distance, and it would be 2 would be 30, wouldn't it? So 10, 20, 30. Once you've got two points, you can go ahead and draw your line. And again, that would be called a rate of change, okay? So remember that whatever you have, whether it's miles per hour, whether it's uh, something like, let's say, I don't know, uh, something per sec uh, pennies per minute, something like that per minute, whether it's something like uh, uh, seconds per minute, 
you know, we know that 60 seconds is one minute, for example. Those would all be rates of change. Just go ahead and connect up the denominator, rather, with the uh, x-axis and the numerator with the y-axis. Okay, I hope that was helpful.